What up, people? It's your boy, Master Trudy, out here with another review of Unicorn Warriors Eternal. So we're picking up where we left off. Otto, the person who managed to reassemble Copernicus but could not uh, empower him, has decided to pretty much send the rest of them on their way to Eldridge's home to see if they can find the source. And we do get a backstory of, you know, what happened with Eldridge's people. He initially was supposed to marry um, another person, another elf, who was the daughter of the Eastern Elves. And their marriage was to continue the bloodline of the kings. But of course, Eldridge at the time was very much, very much in love with Melinda. And we see that um, because of his love for Melinda, he decided to break the line and leave because his heart wouldn't do it. And so that's the end of that. So when they arrive in the forest, um, Sang, Alfie, takes over um, Copernicus's body and decides to control it from there. They decide to move on. Uh, they are ambushed by uh, the Eastern Elves. And then uh, later, um, there's a later, um, furthermore, a there's an, a confrontation with um, Eldridge's people. And then we see that Eldridge meets his brother, who was present for the wedding as well. Uh, they managed to fight off the Easterners, but uh, it doesn't go swimmingly as his brother decides to take them prisoner, saying that, hey, you think I would forget your treachery? And, you know, he's trying to plead with him. That hey, please don't, please don't do this. You have no idea what you're doing. We're just trying to fix our friend. But they end up, um, well, at least in this case, Melinda um, is uh, trapped with uh, Alfie in the dungeon that's stand there. Um, Eldridge finds out that his father has gone through the eternal sleep, the eternal slumber, waiting for his son because of the line that has been broken. But what we don't expect is that we have a pleasant surprise where we see Merlin is also in that prison. And he explains a very interesting thing where since the beginning of the first episode where we saw them battle the evil for the first time, it was, a, it was apparent that, that uh, Eldridge's people blamed uh, Merlin for the death of their, you know, the death of their son, basically. So they imprisoned him there for a while. The prison has runes, so Melinda can't use her magic, and neither can Merlin. But he tells them that, and <laughs> Merlin is quite shocked that all of them seem to be children, that they all have the um, the body, it's like, all have the body of, um, you know, children, basically. Emma is a mirror less a teenage girl, Alfie is a boy, and Eldridge is, I guess you could say, a slightly older teenager, you know, more or less. But um, he's pretty much surprised at the whole thing. Meanwhile, Eldridge decides to say, okay, I'm going to go on, I'm going to complete my quest, I'm going to find the Bloodstone so that we can revive the, pretty much revive our people and our land, which has been devastated due to the lack of a king. So he and his brother set out to journey to find the Bloodstone. But um, we go back to the jail. We see that Emma and Melinda are having a conversation that Emma should go ahead and have Melinda ask Merlin about the truth, whether or not she indeed killed her mother, Morgan Le Fay. And um, after much coaxing, when Merlin is trying to figure out what type of conversation they're having, and he finds out that, of course, that Emma is still in Melinda's body, and he remembers her from that time, so clearly Emma managed to go back in time, and Merlin remembers it, despite the, you know time being in a very fluid form. Mm. That said, they have their conversation, both Merlin and uh, Melinda, and you know, Merlin at first does blame uh, Melinda for the death of you know the, of her mother, you know, of Morgan Le Fay, saying that you know she tried to take your magic. It was too much for her, and it consumed her. And, you know, Melinda's like, I didn't know, but Merlin's like, you should have been more powerful. But then Emma comes in and defends Melinda, saying that, you know, how could you put that on a child? She was just a girl. And it's like, it's like she should have been stronger. They say, like, why couldn't you be stronger? And Merlin's like, I tried, but I couldn't do it. And she said, well, if you couldn't do it, how could you expect her to do it? And then Merlin realizes the error of his ways, they have a good, um, they have a good, uh, 
father daughter bonding. They don't hug, even though Emma's like saying you should hug. But um, we find out that uh, Alfie is out of prison. Right, he wants some water. He realizes he's out, beats up the guards, frees them. And we find out that um, Murray's able to see through Alfie's eyes that Eldritch and his brother are in trouble due to the fact that they managed to get in, they managed to sneak in, and they see that uh, Eldritch's uh, would have been father in law is pouring his blood into the stone so that a new line can be formed. And of course, there's a necromancer there doing it, and they manage to disturb the process. So the necromancer begins to attack them. She summoned two large skeletons. What I find interesting is that the necromancer knows of Merlin and tells him that this is not your realm. You, you have no jurisdiction here. You shouldn't be here, which I find fascinating. But of course, Merlin's like, my powers are too, I'm too great for such limitations like that. And they begin to fight. And uh, Merlin defeats the necromancer very easily. Uh, Emma, um, you pretty much have Linda save pretty much saved um, saved Eldritch's brother and then finally we see that Eldritch versus defeats his would-be father-in-law to take the stone and restore uh, beauty and peace to his land but uh, after everything that's happened we see that uh, you know Merlin tells him that hey every time you defeat the evil your souls are taken and then Caper and then uh, Copernicus pretty much takes them in and keeps them you know in storage until the next time you have to fight the evil. And of course, in this case, uh, Merlin isn't, um, Merlin uses the stone actually to revive Copernicus. So Copernicus is back in action. And they told Merlin that, Hey, we defeated the evil. But, uh, Merlin tells them that now, then when they realize that their souls are not being taken, that, Hey, um, your souls are not going back into storage because the evil is not defeated as we all pretty much guess that there's no way that, it was. It's going to be that easy for them to defeat the evil. So now they're at a crossroads, or at least Eldritch is at. Does he go with them to defeat the evil? Because Merlin's like saying, "Oh no, 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 no! You can't stay here, man. You, you, you've got your oath." And his brother's like, "Oh my gosh, again! You're gonna to have to leave. What about your oath?" And so uh, Merlin. So Eldritch is confused, but we see that we have a funeral. Eldritch's brother is on a um, pyre. It's on a pyre, pretty much. Uh, their father is in full form revived thanks to the stone, and Merlin is like saying, hey, your son will be remembered, your youngest son will be remembered for his sacrifice because it was deemed that he died um, trying to get the heart back, so they take the soul out of Edridge and put it into El Edridge's or original body, which, if I did not mention, was taken by his people and preserved with the hope that he would return one day, and they had accused Merlin of a uh, you know, killing him, but he's there. And so a soul is put into Eldridge's original body and Eldridge, in his original body, pretty much gives him the sword, said, thank you for all that you've done. And I give the sword for you to fight the evil. Little do we know that Eldridge is still in the body of um, uh, Dimitri, the person who took over at the beginning of episode two. And we see that um, they decide to put his brother's soul into... Eldritch's original body and himself to stay there so they could fight the evil. And so, you know, he laments that he can never really come back home and go back to what it was, but they have to focus on the evil. And Merlin's like, yeah, I'll get back to you on that. My guy just opens a portal and then pieces out. And that's the end of the episode. Um, I'm going to be frank, not to be hyperbolic, I think this is my favorite episode. There's a lot of action, there's a lot of plot, we've got a lot of backstory on Eldridge and what happened to his people, what happened to his home. It was good to see uh, Merlin, um, now in the present, interact in this this um, form of Merlin, since the most we've seen of him was the beginning of episode one, and of course the flashback. It was also nice to, for him to give um, some background on how Copernicus does his job, what's he supposed to do, and confirming that the transfer had gone horribly wrong because they shouldn't be this young. Like saying in Alfie's body shouldn't have the boy shouldn't have the body of a boy. Uh, Melinda should not be in the body of a of a teenage girl and Eldridge the same thing in a teenage boy. That something has gone amiss. 
And that's led him to say that I've got to go and consult and find out these things myself, leaving them, you know, in the dark, <laughs> his team. At the same time, it's good to see um, that, of course, the evil is not necessarily destroyed and that there's still going to be some issues. But that said, yeah, I really like this, giving it a 9 out of 10. And this was actually a longer than 30-minute episode, you know. It's around 40 minutes, so... It went on. So we all like that. So uh, this is a great series. And um, I once again recommend you all to watch it. So thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notifications to make sure you're notified. Comment down below and tell me what you think about this episode. Once again, I do these reviews for you, the people, because I want to discuss good shows like this and get your views on them. Thank you all for watching. And I will have more videos up when I can. Peace.